Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds, and what a day it is, finally. How is how long is it? Four years in the waiting? Not quite. 2019, yeah, four years. Three and a half years in the waiting, and Virat Kohli has finally got a ton. So it's happy. taken <laughs> so long, but thank you, thank you for all your support. We've been waiting for this for a while. We needed the views, and they're finally come. <laughs> No, um, it's genuinely, it was so impressive to watch. Um, after so long, the, the the wait is finally over. And um, even though this India versus Australia match looks like it's probably going to be a draw, um, it's I think it's going to offer such a big boost to that Indian side. The fact that Virat Kohli's kind of, he's finally put a bookend to his slump in form. And yeah, you know, looking forward to like the World Test Championship final, things like that. He can finally, uh, you know, put a real statement, and yeah, he, he becomes that talisman for India again. Yeah, definitely. He's Virat Kohli. Class is permanent. That's the phrase, isn't it? Even if he's had a, a slump, um, he has hit a century in international cricket mm. uh, between um, 2019 uh, and now. We got that 2021, but. Test is where it counts, isn't it? And oh, yeah, we put it was a well made, well made century. Uh, low risk as well. I think on that pitch, if you play low risk cricket, then you'll get your rewards. Uh, we saw that with uh, Shrikhar Barrett as well, who it would be nice for him to score a few runs. Um, and Aksar Patel down the order is such a handy, handy player to have. Um, so even though he's not been great with the ball this series, at least he's had those contributions. Um, but yeah, King Coley. Back at his best, scoring those centuries. We love to see it. And hopefully this will continue because at the moment, this Indian side needs that strength in the middle order. Mm. If, if you're number three and four, Pajaran and Kohli aren't doing well, then you're going to struggle to post to post decent totals. So, yeah, it's definitely a very good boost, as you've said, for, for the Indian team. What was your take on um, Australia's bowling overall? I thought it was a bit lacklustre. Um, I'd say in particular, Mitchell Stark looked quite ineffective, but um, not as much as Cameron Green. So generally, seamers are going to struggle on a track like that. It was very flat. It was low and slow. Um, so you're going to see spinners do better. But I thought Cameron Green, he showed his kind of inexperience with the bowling because it is a very difficult track. And I don't think he offers anything different enough. So no. with Mitchell Stark, he can he can bowl those searing Yorkers. That's kind of his point of difference. If you look at um, bowlers with express pace, they can like blow the game open by just you know, bowling bouncers, things like that. Cameron Green, he's got height, but he doesn't really have the pace. So mm. yeah, it didn't really show um, sh show himself to be that all utility player. But because he's got his century already, like. Yeah, he's. I think he's going to have games where he shows his application in both both disciplines. So it's yeah. not too much of a problem. And then spin wise, it was hard for those uh, for the three spinners of Lyon, Kuhneman, and Murphy. Like between them, they bowled over a hundred and thirty uh, overs. A lot. That a is lot a ball. hell of a lot. Nathan Lyon in particular, mm -hmm. sixty five overs. Oh, I, I don't envy him. I do not envy him a bit. Not at what, all. what were your thoughts? Yeah, I, like you've said, just to echo what you said, and I think they just they just stuck at it. They they did as well as they could. Um, it was hard work when the ball's not doing much. Uh, we saw a few balls, um, and I spoke about this yesterday. A few balls were skidding on a bit, but it wasn't anything that in these Indian batsmen who've grown up on these sorts of wickets were were alien to they were able to adapt and, and and yeah they were they were nullified really especially by Virat Kohli who just he just seemed to just play the ball into the leg side beautifully in his innings and really nullify smaller the spin really and nullify any dangers that are there um Nathan Lyon does look very good though like he he stuck at it well um but he did he bowled incredibly well but just didn't have the rewards for it um and I think his record for Asia shows that. Uh, but Matthew Kuhneman opened the ball, uh, opened the batting. 
uh, for India in their uh, for Australia in their in their chase, and yeah, maybe maybe he's looking to kick David Warner out of the team. I wonder. <laughs> See how he does tomorrow. Um, Honestly, I, no. I I think um, having like, obviously he played Night Watchman today, um, mm. but. It's this test and this test series has really shown the utility in having bowlers that can bat. Yeah, That's been kind of one of the main themes for me because like Axar Patel, for example, um, without his runs, I think India would be struggling right now because Shreya Sire obviously has had a back problem. He's had to go off to, to get some scans done, some checks. So all the best to him. But when you've got that, that depth, um, then it, it makes such a big difference to the batting lineup and the confidence that those top order players can have as well. Um, and it, it also, it just demoralizes the bowlers because, you know, imagine being Nathan Lyon bowling 65 overs, you know, taking these vital wickets and then thinking like, oh, I've got, you know, KS Barrett out, but now Axar Patel's coming in. And it's mm-hmm. like, you know, there's another 80 runs there. It's just, it's a bit soul destroying thinking I'm right in yeah. the tail here, but the tail wags every single time. We saw it with New Zealand against Sri Lanka. Uh, Matt Henry 72 when Sri Lanka were looking to get a 50 run lead and they end up not having that yet. It's, it is annoying. Um, so, well, India had it, didn't they? With with the likes of Todd Murphy and um, Nathan Lyon back and well, so yeah, it's yeah, it is it is frustrating, and we we see it at the club level as well. Mm. And I'm sure you guys who play cricket at the club level will see it as well. The fact that you get this, you work hard for the first five wickets, and then the number eight batsman who just slogs everything and gets away with it and makes <laughs> makes a few runs, makes a ton maybe. It's, it's the it's worst. So frustrating. So um, we've got time for yes. two CNQs. All right, lovely. So the first CNQ we've got. It's from PD, legend of the game. He said, how would you assess Barrett's wicket keeping so far? Would you allow him a few more tests or replace him? I'm happy to answer this one and say, they've got no choice. You've got to allow him a few more tests. Um, mm. He's, I don't, like on the tracks that he's played on so far, I, I said I haven't been too impressed with him. And that's true. He hasn't been amazing, um, especially to see how well he's done domestically. But I don't think there's a viable alternative that's like genuinely going to do better than him ishan kishan i I just i don't see him doing markedly better than ks barrett so personally i just don't see that as a a viable option until pant returns to be honest given india's strength down the order with axel patan and ravi ashwin ravi jadeja they can afford to have that old-fashioned keeper who averages in who averages about 30 Mm. um I don't think India will necessarily be asking for any more than Stricker Barrett, just having that specialist keeper. Um, even if he comes in at number nine, <laughs> yes. it's not a, it's not the most awful thing, is it? Um, yeah, genuinely. Um, yes. The other, the other and final uh, CNQ, which I want to hand over to you because it's quite a funny idea, is from yeah, sure. Abhishek Qwerty One. And he said, uh, who do you think English conditions would suit more, India or Australia? And uh, and this is kind of, you know, looking forward to the World Ch- Test Championship final. Um, yeah. And any chance that English staff would give a dry pitch to prefer Indian spinners just to annoy their rival Australia? <laughs> well, it's a good point. Um, however, having seen how well India played on their tour to England not so long ago, uh, the application of Rohit Sharma at the top of the order um Pajara is very good in English conditions, having played for Sussex. Oh, look who it is. Oh, a special guest. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Got a fellow cricket nerd. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> um, yeah, I think given that we're, we're talking about if the pitches in when Australia play India in England, are the England um, pitches going to be dry to favour the Indian bowlers? Um, just, just to however, avoid the Aussies. Just to annoy the Aussies because we don't like the Aussies. Mm. However, at the same time, I think yeah, as I was saying, given how well India did in that series against England, their seamers were awesome in those conditions. Um, yeah, what, you, what what do you think, Benj? Well, it's going to be a very different 
game the World Championship final just because of where it is, because it is in England. It's at Lords. It's it is going to be different. The, the teams are going to come with different makeups. I agree. I probably think they'll see two, probably three, maybe four seamers from each side, <laughs> and I think that doesn't give either team. I think what that does is, is it makes it more of a level playing field rather than favour each other team. Because mm. as we've said, India have got a fantastic seam attack. If we have Bumrah, Shami and Siraj all fit, that is going to be a really good pace attack. And it yeah. also favours Australia if you've got Cummings, Stark and Hazelwood. Like both of those lineups. Are, so, so I think what it will do is it will make it a very interesting and a... Um, competitive World Test Championship final. Yeah. You, you want you want it to be kind of neutral, don't you? To to favour neither team, and also, yeah, because that's that's where you're going to get the most kind of, I don't know, level assessment. Um, right, Benji, because you're the late arrival, I've got one last question to kind of sum up the video, which is kind of have three words to sum up King Coley's return to form and his century. Uh about damn time <laughs> there we go <laughs> thank you and so much something. for watching <laughs> thank um, you didn't... Oh, go on. was there an england bangladesh game was that uh, no i don't did that, think that was. I, I didn't hear about I, that I, I, I don't um, think it happened no no i enjoyed I... watching joffrey archer bowl i saw i saw joffrey archer bowl but was it official game i don't know no, I, I, I heard that it was just a fake game but joffrey archer yeah. bowled well and then i it can't be a real one because Chris Jordan bowled at the death and he didn't bowl very well. So that never happens. I, I don't think there was a T20 between England and Bangladesh, to be honest. What's T20? I, Who knows? Yeah, no idea. Da, da. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for continued support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell your friends about the channel um, and follow our social medias as well. We're active on Twitter and Instagram and all that good stuff. So get involved. Uh, it's all in the link tree down in the description. Other than that, thank you so much. Leave your CNQs, your Cricket Nerds questions down below and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.